Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Gabriel with another Fan TV. Back at you another video. Hey, look, man, like, comment, subscribe. We're gonna hop right into it. Lamar Jackson speaks media. Listen, don't don't talk, don't make up no narratives, just listen. Alright. Now, Lamar Jackson, he should be called a narrative buster because that's what he did again. He does it with his play on the field. Now he's doing it in the press conferences, okay? What have we heard all off season? He doesn't want to be a Raven. Why is he not coming to the table? This and that, blah, blah, blah. He says in the press conference, I want to be a Raven for life. I expect to be here for the rest of my career. Okay, that narrative's now done. Let's go to the next one. Why is the team trading his star, his star wide receiver without letting him know? Let's push that to the side. Lamar Jackson says, I knew about the Hollywood trade beforehand because, duh, you tell your quarterback when you're trading his um, his best receiver at the time. Of course you do. The the tweet, the WTF, the WTF tweet was about the fact that Hollywood was already in Arizona. Okay? He knew Hollywood was going to be traded. Hollywood, that's his friend, one of his better friends, didn't tell him that he was already going to fly out to Arizona for the draft party. All right? It caught Lamar Jackson by surprise. But this is something that fans have been saying from the, from the jump. And the media have been taking off with it. Talking about, oh, wow, did the Ravens really not tell him that they were trading his star receiver? What team in NFL history has done that? Come on now, let's think. Let's be smart. All right? Um, and now to the to the latest one, the one that was only a couple uh, a couple weeks ago. All right. Why weren't you there for voluntary OTAs? He wasn't there because he was grinding with his QB coach, as you can literally see with your own two eyes on, on social media. And he's grinding with his um his personal trainer. Excuse me. OK, he said he even asked his teammates, hey, yo, look, is it OK if I skip voluntary? to work on this, uh, you know, QB coach with my personal trainer. Is it okay? His teammates pretty much told him, get right, it's cool. He was in contact with his teammates about skipping voluntary OTAs when we got guys like Chris Sims saying he's not a leader for not being there. When he literally asked his teammates, is it okay? We got guys, we got media saying, oh, well, is he holding out now because he's not at voluntary OTAs? No, he's not. Lamar Jackson just... He's chopping down narrative after narrative after narrative, just chopping it down. Okay, now um, let's let's talk about the actual contract. He did mention something about that. Now he said that he thinks he's worthy of the contract extension. I think all Ravens fans agree he deserves to be one of the top, if not the top, paid quarterback in the NFL. Look, every time a contract happens, you one up the guy that preceded you. Now, obviously, Patrick Mahomes and his contract was a little different, so nobody's going to up, you know, 10 years for $100 million. Nobody's going to up that. But when it comes to average per year, Lamar's going to get that 45 to $50 million, man. That's, that's, that's just what it's going to be. Now, that's something that was thrown out there that, honestly, I believed in. Hey, look, Lamar busted my own narrative, okay? He said that he's now waiting for the Super Bowl to do a contract. So that was something that had kind of been thrown around that he's going to wait till after the season to, to uh, uh, do the contract and things like that and just focus on football this year. But he said, that, look, he's ready to talk. So this is a big uh, progression in the contract negotiation. Now, hopefully that means over this next month, uh, over this next two months before the regular season starts, maybe Lamar Jackson has signed that new contract, whatever it's going to be. Because uh, it sounds like he's ready to come to the table now. You know, he, you know, putting it out there that I'm not waiting to after the Super Bowl, after the season, that's something that is different. That's something that's new. I haven't heard that. So shout out to Lamar Jackson. I hope that's true because I can't wait for the day to Ravens sign him up. So that's good. Okay, let's talk about football things that he talked about on the field, okay? Um, his playing weight. <laughs> but people were saying, oh, you know, he looks bigger. It's because he is bigger. Lamar has to say he's at 220 pounds right now, all right? That his playing weight used to be 205, 208. So Lamar Jackson took it on upon himself to add 12 to 15 pounds of muscle this offseason. That's dedication right there. And also, this is not to run the ball more. This is to stand in the pocket and take any hits that may come from sacks, okay? Now, I don't think Lamar Jackson, like I said, I don't think he bulked up so he can carry the ball more. He's a quarterback. He wants to throw it. He wants to get it to his guys. So I'm happy he's added the extra weight. He says he feels good. And, um, yeah, that's that's it, man. But, you know, he looks like um, ain't like, he like he's in great shape. And that's the truth. He is in great shape. So Lamar Jackson playing weight is up. All right. Now, Lamar Jackson doesn't stop working. 
you know, old, uh, mandatory OTAs or mandatory minicamp, however you want to call it, is now finished. So now the Ravens have, you know, this long break until they come back for training camp. He's getting together with his wide receivers and his tight ends at Florida Atlantic next month. Uh, head coach Willie Taggart, uh, I guess, allowed him to do that. They, they'll be there working out and stuff like that. So the, so the Ravens receivers and tight ends will be there with Lamar Jackson next month working out. This dude doesn't stop working, man. I don't want to hear the narratives about not being a good teammate, not being a leader. He's getting his guys together in Florida next month. This is something that the Ravens fans wanted to hear when Joe Flacco was a the quarterback. They just like Joe Flacco showed up for OTAs, showed up for training camp, and that was it. We didn't see no work in the offseason. Now, I'm not saying because we didn't see it, he didn't work. I'm just saying that Lamar Jackson puts it out there, and we're going to see the videos. I'm, I'm positive there's going to be videos of it. So Lamar Jackson is just... He's the Ravens quarterback. Simple as that. He's the face of the franchise. He's the leader, okay? And all doubts about whether or not he wants to be here or, or is he going to go somewhere else, put that put that to rest. Put it to the side. Let's focus on football. And one player that he did mention, Isaiah Likely. Isaiah Likely apparently had a really good day today at um, day three of um, OTAs. Uh, sorry, I keep calling it OTAs. A mandatory minicamp. So Isaiah Likely, he likes him. Uh, no pun intended right there, but... Uh, impressive catches, one hand catches, diving catches. He said he was a tremendous catch. He was impressed by his hands. Um, and I think Isaiah Likely is going to have a big role to play on this offense that the Ravens need to find a way to get this guy on the field and really use him. But Lamar Jackson, narrative buster, that's the, that's the headline. I want to be a Raven. I expect to be here for the rest of my career. Okay? That's the expectation. Now, now the contract just has to get done. Now let's stop trying to psychoanalyze everything Lamar Jackson does and just realize that he wants to be a Raven. And let's have a good season, win the Super Bowl, and that and that'd be that. All right, man. I just had to drop this video real quick. Uh, it's your boy Gabriel, just up the fan TV. I'm out.